It was 25 years ago tonight when thieves masquerading as Boston cops entered the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum and pulled off the biggest art heist in American history. They stole 13 works now valued at more than $500 million. In the interim years, the museum's director, Ann Holy, has not spoken a lot about the case. But she recently sat down with WGBH's arts editor, Jared Bowen, for her only TV interview on that subject. 25 years later, how, how do you look at it? Well, it still hurts. I mean, Ann Hawley was just months into her job as director of the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum when, at home making breakfast, she received an alarming phone call from her security director. I only lived 10 minutes away, um, so I just hopped into my car and drove in, uh, not knowing what I was going to confront. I think from that moment, probably for several months, was just in a state of shock. In the early morning hours, two thieves had entered the museum and tied up its two guards. In 81 minutes, they methodically worked their way through the gardener, stealing 13 pieces, including Rembrandt's only known seascape and Vermeer's The Concert, one of only 36 of the Dutch master's paintings known to exist. They tore the paintings from their frames, which hang still. The theft drew international attention, and the museum was under siege. We had bomb threats to the museum. And then personally, um, there were several of us that had threats against us. And, um, and so I had, was told to go a different way every time I left the museum. You, you stayed 25 years. Were there moments where you thought, I, I just can't keep up with this? Well, in the beginning, I thought that what I would do, particularly in the first year when it felt dangerous and it felt so frightening and it felt so difficult, I thought that I would stay long enough to get things on track. But of course, then I fell in love with the collections and, and with the people and with the work. The FBI, the museum says, has always kept agents on the case, although with an intensity now unlike ever before. Have there been moments over the 25 years where you thought that, that they were coming back? Oh, yes. Um, particularly, um, there were a number of leads where it looked like we were so close. It's just so extraordinary how you can work so hard on a lead and then it will just blow up in your face. I feel like probably three times I thought we were there and then we weren't. How do you come back from that? Well, that, I'll tell you, I no longer let myself get my hopes up on a lead because of that. You know, I, I'm, I'm not going to be there until I see them. Since 1997, there has been a $5 million reward for information leading to the recovery of the stolen works in good condition. It brings the museum 8 to 10 tips every week. We believe those responsible for the theft were members of a criminal organization. In a surprise announcement two years ago, FBI officials revealed for the first time they knew the identity of the thieves. It was a splashy development, but still didn't bring the art back. Do you think you know what happened to them? No, I don't. I, I mean, I, I think they're being held. I, I believe they're there. I, I don't believe anything has destroyed them. Do you think they're together? No, I think, but I don't think they're far, but this is just, instinct. Holly does believe the works will return someday and hopefully, she says, before she retires at the end of the year. In the meantime, she continues to offer the thieves the same message she always has. I just hope they're keeping it safe and at a temperature of 65 and humidity of 50 uh, percent because that's what they need. When you say things like that, do you think they're listening? You just don't know. I've actually taken heart from other recoveries where the work has been kept in good climate conditions. Uh, um, so let's hope. Jared Bowen, WGBH News.